equals 5, let's say. That's how I would do it if we'd hard code this, the, the select statement. If it's built into our program, though, what do we do? If we build this into our ASP.NET program, what do we do? Well, we're not always going to want to select category 5, so what do we do? We put a placeholder in here. Where category equals question mark. Category ID equals question mark. And then we fill in that value from the query string or from the drop down or from whatever. All right. So we use, how do I want to say this? Line one is what a hard coded SQL statement would look like. All right. But we don't want hard coded SQL statements, right? We want it to be based on something that the user has done or based on some other conditions. So we want these things to be parameterized, right? So we're never, we're, almost never going to have anything hard-coded like line one. Our select statements are going to look more like line three, typically. Because, again, now if you look, if you notice, part of the SQL statement is the same every time. A part of it, though, is going to get filled in at runtime. So this part is the same every time. If you go back and look at like where we were selecting polls, you know, the only thing that was different, the only thing we filled in at runtime was the poll ID. So, if I do an insert into this table, be a hard-coded one, what do you suppose our insert statement within our application is going to look like? Again, we're going to apply the same theme, right? Some of this is going to be hard-coded, because if we're inserting into the category table, we're inserting into the category table, all right? If we're, uh, if we're inserting in and we're giving the category name, that column is still going to be called category name each time. The only thing that's going to be different is instead of always inserting web design, we're going to get that parameter from somewhere, right? So you, and you don't need the quotes in there, then? You don't need the quotes. Um, at some point, I'll talk about this more in detail, but there's really a nice, the, the, the SQL parameters object does a lot of that handling for you. Because in a SQL statement, you put quotes around strings, you, put, uh, you don't put quotes around numbers, and you do something else with dates. And I don't remember off the top of my head. I think pound signs. All right? The nice thing is, is you don't have to worry about that when you use the SQL parameters. It, it sets them up the right way. And, in fact, it even escapes them. And, and I'll, remind me, I'll share a cartoon with you from uh, the, that's real geek humor. What's that? XC, what, what's the name of that? The, the, the web comic strip, the famous geek one? XKCD or something like that. Yeah, it was a pretty funny uh, one that relates to a problem that we won't have because we're going to be using the ASP.NET um, controls. And a similar thing is going to apply to the update and delete, right? Each one of those, there's a portion of the statement that's going to be hard-coded, and there's a portion of it that's a parameter that's going to get filled in based on something, all right? So let's go in. Let's open this guy up. And there's a few ways we can do it. It's got build and complexity. The most complicated thing, of course, being finding the Visual Studio icon. It's, it's third down next to the notepad. Four, one, two, three, four, five, fifth down. One, oh, there we go. Now, wait a minute. Let's back up for a second. I haven't 
criticized Windows 8 for a while. <laughs> Wasn't a notepad somewhere else on the screen a minute ago? Yeah. I think it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, right it, right was. it was. Wasn't it like up there somewhere? Yeah. What's up with that? <laughs> I don't feel so bad like I'm losing it now. If it's if they're gonna like move icons around. Wow. All right, anyhow, let's go in and let's bring in our website. Now, we're going to start letting the .NET Framework do the work for us, all right? And we'll gradually take more and more control of this and do stuff on our own, all right? But, but the simplest way, I think, to progress through this is to first use the .NET um, Framework to um, do some of these things. So we're going to take the easy way out for the first time. Don't get used to it, though, all right? I know Chad was complaining that some of my assignments were too easy, so I'm going to make the rest of them a lot harder because of that. <laughs> so I'm going to make a page called Category. And I'm going to start out just making a run-of-the-mill grid view like we always have. All right. So I'll go in here and... I'll make my grid view. I'll make my data source and I'll make my grid view. And my data source is going to say, click that connection. Select star from, let's, let's do the full blown, select, cat, select category ID, comma, actually I, I changed my mind. I promised you an easy, easy time today, so we'll do this. We'll use the query builder to build that query. You know, sometimes I've gone in and done the SQL myself manually like that, and next time I open it, it'll be defaulted to that builder thing. Hmm. Is it maybe because I chose a statement that was so simple it just said, just do it our way? I don't know. Uh, the error it's giving me is because I have it open in Access in, in Design View. All right, so there we go. All right, and I probably should slap an order by clause in here. So I'll slap an order by clause. All right, I can click finish then. And then I'm going to go and bring my grid view over. I'm going to associate this data source with the grid view. All right, so now when I run this, we set this as the start page, which I like to do as I'm working on things, so I don't have to remember to stay on that page. You know, I can just, no matter where I initiate the debug from, it'll start the page that I'm working on currently. So I go here, and away we go. have that. Now, you can use grid views in addition to displaying data to actually update the data as well. All right. If we think about it though, all right, there's two things that we have to update to make this work. It would seem like there are two things that we have to update to make this work. And there is two things that we have to update. What are the two things we have to update? We have to update the SQL data source. So we have to let the SQL data source know what we want to do when we want to update this. And then we have to change the user interface for the grid to say updates and deletes are allowed. All right. 
you can't insert on a grid. All right, you can insert on a details view, but for this example, we're just going to do an update and delete. All right. Now, if you think about it, these are separate things. These are separate conceptual things. And, and let me try to explain to you why. Again, remember, just in principle, it's a good idea to have things separated. Have the data source and how the database is interacted with separate than the user interface, that is how the user inter uh, interacts with the data on the screen. One of the reasons for that is let's think of this. Let's say we have a, a, a function such as updating categories, but that's not something that everyone can do. Maybe only certain users can do that. All right? Just like, you know, in Angel, you know, uh, anyone can post to a discussion forum, but only I can grade an assignment. So there's a certain capability that only I have, you know, as the instructor that the students don't have. So we may build the capability into the <coughs> database object, the data source, and then control who gets to do it via the grid. So I can set parameters to enable or disable updates and deletes based on who's logged in. So that's a reason why we're, we're, we reason why it's sort of a good idea to have these two things separated, all right, and not sort of combined together. So we're going to have to change this. And we're going to have to change this to allow for updates. I'm going to go up here, configure data source, and if I click advanced, it will ask me if I want to generate the insert, update, and delete statements. And you're thinking, oh cool, I don't have to write any code. Well, <laughs> in this case you don't, but at some point you will. Because it's going to take a guess at what you want. Now, in this case, it's almost impossible to guess wrong, right? Because we got a two-column table here, all right? It's going to be pretty obvious what it is we want to do. So I'm going to pick generate that. Concurrency, we're going to leave that for now. I'm not going to check that, all right? We'll talk about concurrency later on. But I am going to have it in, generate an insert, update, delete statement. And I can click OK. And... Next, and finish. Now, we don't see the insert, update, and delete statement because, again, we took the sort of the easy way out of just having that. But we can look at it if we do a view source. There's a delete command that it generated. Delete from category where category ID equals question mark. All right, which is what we'd expect. We're certainly not going to hard code the thing that we want to delete because we want to delete a different one each time. Insert command equals insert into category, category ID. Oh, insert into category, category, category ID, values, question mark, and question mark. Actually, we don't really need the category ID there because that's not a number key. But that's okay, we're not going to be using the insert statement anyhow. So I don't have to mess with that. Where is the update statement? I thought it was at the very end. Oh, there we go. Update category, set category name equals question mark where category ID equals that. Now if we look here, when we did our select, we filled in where the parameters are coming from on a screen. Here, though, is a little smarter, and it can make some assumptions for us. For example, it assumes when I do a delete, for example, the parameter is coming from the grid views category ID. All right. When I do an insert, the first argument is category ID, the second one is category name. When I do an update, the first parameter is category name. The second is category ID. All right? The first thing that gets plugged in in sequence is category name. 
The second one that gets plugged in in sequence is category ID. So these things correspond to the stuff that we're going to stuff into that SQL data source. All right. That's only half the job, though, because we've now set and allowed that SQL data source to be able to delete and update things, but we have not allowed um, the data grid or the grid view to enable updates and deletes. So it's out there, it has that potential, but we can't get to it because our user interface blocks people. So how do we do that? We go into here and we say enable editing, enable delete. So let's run this and let's see what happens. All right, there it is. We have our uh, edit and delete buttons. I click edit. It changes that from a label to a text box. Notice I can't get into the category ID. Why? Well, because it knows that that's a, a primary key and I don't want to change it. So I can go and change it and say art. Let's say let's change it to fine arts. I now have two buttons, an update and a cancel. If I click update, it went and it changed it. And again, it resorted it, right? Because it's now in a different order. If I hit delete, you're gonna like this. Boom, it's gone. Ooh. That's a little scary. That's a little scary, right? We better do something about that. And we will at some point. All right, we will at some point. Is there an undo button? If you write one, there will be. Yeah. That's actually a great assignment. Do an undo delete. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that's it on the basic uh, thing. It generates the insert, update, delete. It supplies the um, it supplies the parameters, getting them from the grid view and putting them in where appropriate. And it goes and does its thing. Now let's watch what happens if we try to do something bad. Like if I go in here and I try to change entertainment to sports. All right. That shouldn't work, right? Because I already have a category named sports. Yeah, you might want to duck. Oh. Boom. Wow, it's a big one. I would hope this would be intelligible to you. All right. Uh, the change you requested to the table were not successful because they would create a duplicate values in the index primary key or relationship. Blah 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 blah. Actually. I'm getting this error because I'm running in development environment. You probably don't want to broadcast these errors to the world because, <laughs> seriously, because, um, you know, they can get information uh, that could be useful in hacking your site by, by generating errors. So usually if I were to put this on another server and access it, there's a flag in the web config file that would allow me to suppress error messages. So we would just say, it would just give them a very generic error like, you got a problem there, you know. That didn't work, all right? But clearly we want to do even better than that. We want to form a user-friendly error message and deal with it some way. Um, we're not necessarily going to do it right today, but that's something that we will do at some point, all right? Likewise, if I went and did this, same thing. You must enter a name. You see that one again, category, category, ID, uh, name. I've just told people the names of my table and one of the columns in the database. If I cancel, everything goes back the way it was. Let me look at the database. I forget the relationship I created between two of the tables. All 
Ah, I'm not cascading delete. So if I try to delete a category that has questions, such as technology, it's not going to let me. So I go up here and start it. I go to delete sports, let's say. Boom. Record cannot be changed or deleted because table poll includes related records. And again, with these error messages, you can actually reverse engineer so much of the database. You know that the poll is related to category now. You know, just by poking around, if you've got these very descriptive error messages, that could give you some insight on, on the page. If we set it to cascade, of course, when I deleted the category, it would delete all the polls as well, automatically. Okay. Now, we don't have inserts here. Inserts aren't allowed on a grid view. And, eh, I guess I can see why that is. But that's neither here nor there. That is... A example uh, or that is something that, that we're not allowed to do. So let's go and add a details view so we can do inserts and updates and deletes. So I'm going to go and I'm going to add a details view here. By the way, Did you notice that when I clicked save, or, or whatever, whatever it says when I save it, that my page was immediately refreshed with the new values? What does that imply about that save link? It goes Submits the form. Right. All right, let's go in. What did I want to add? I want to add a details view. Let's add a details view. Let's connect it to the same data source. You normally wouldn't do this, but just for demonstration, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to enable insert, update, deleting, and paging. All right. I don't have to go and do anything in the SQL data source because that's already taken care of, take care of for me. All right, I run this. It brings up the first category. I can scroll through. And I can add it here. Let's do something high tech. Let's, let's use a three for the letter E. I'll use a zero for the letter O. Because I think that's what those kids do these days. All right. I can go and click new. And I can go and type a new category in. Let's say um, arts, because I deleted that one. Oops. And insert. And ooh, I got an error. All right. This is why you got to learn how to read code. Yeah. All right. Let's go back. There's only a spot for category name, right? There's no category ID in that table. And yet, if I look at my SQL data source, I'm sorry, if I look at my code, and I look at my insert statement, it wants a category ID. That's a bug in Visual Studio, and it generated that. But guess whose problem it is? <laughs> it's now your problem, right. right? So this is why it's important to know how insert statements work, even if you do these things and just generate the stuff, right? Because what if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't do it the way you expect or correctly? And in this case, it clearly doesn't. 
I have no idea why it put the, the category ID in there. It could tell that that's an auto number key. It told that it was an auto number key when it generated the grid view, right. right? But it didn't do it here. So what can I do? I can just go and eliminate that from the insert statement. I can eliminate that from the values, the question mark. And I can get rid of that insert parameter. And now I should be able to run it. And put in arts and insert. And there you go. All right. I can't stress enough the importance to uh, the importance of a couple things. One thing is to look at the HTML code that this creates. That's very useful in styling issues. You know, if you're trying to style something, it's hard sometimes, it's at least hard for me, to visualize what I need to do style-wise to the ASP.NET controls. But once I see the HTML that those uh, controls generate, then it's sort of a no-brainer. It's like, oh, okay, that's what I have to do. So that's one thing. The other thing is always look at your code that is generated on the ASP.NET side, too. Don't be just a someone that drags and drops and clicks things and configures things and all that. Really gain an understanding of the source code it generates. All right? You don't need Visual Studio to write an ASP.NET app. I could write this all in Notepad if I wanted to. All right? But it would drive me crazy, right? There'd be a million little things that I'd forget, and what's the parameter name for that? And what's, so the IntelliSense and things like that really come in useful. <coughs> uh, and the fact that it does some things for you makes your life easier for you. But not if you are at the mercy of the tool, and not if you don't have any kind of clue of the code that it generates. So I encourage you to look at it. There's an article few years back, something like, does Visual Studio make you stupid? And the argument was that by sort of abstracting everything uh, and making it so easy to do so much with not any code, do keep in mind, by the way, folks, we haven't touched a code behind file in how long, right? All these things we're doing, we're doing based on configuring the ASP.NET controls. And we're doing a fair amount of stuff here. But Again, don't be at the mercy of it where you have no idea what kind of code it generates. So if something weird happens like it did a minute ago, you have no idea how to fix it. All right? So be, become familiar. Even if you generate something using uh, the, the Visual Studio GUI, take a minute to look at the code it generates so that you understand it and then have a fighting chance if you're, if you're, if you're troubleshooting. Questions? Yes? If, if we wanted to, or if we, if you wrote it um, out of your insert and delete statements and did it the same way, would it come up the same way? If you didn't use the, like the handy dandy little thing where you just checked and did it all. If you wrote your own statement. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I could have gone in, just like in previous classes, I went in and typed in the select statement, select something from category, all right? right. I could go in and say insert into category, and I could just type out a proper insert statement, it come and it would, it would work the same. Okay. Yeah. That's the grid view controller. Yeah. You're talking about the grid view controller. Right. 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 Yeah, it would. Yeah. Everything would work the same. All right. Now, do keep in mind that I did this just for an example. I put the grid view and the, the, the details view on the same page. All right, you, you probably wouldn't want to do that. All right, I mean, that's kind of a confusing user interface. I just did that just to save a second of time to avoid having uh, to do that. Questions about any of this? I have a question about something else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 